Hi there, and welcome back to another episode at Station Road. Now, today we carry on with the coal merchant's yard where we last left off doing the interior detail for the workshop. So if we just go back and take a look at where we got to in the previous modeling for this coal yard and also for the workshop and as you can see we've got the main structures of course and also the textures the cobblestone and the brick walls and so forth but we hadn't got as far as doing any weathering or of course adding the detail into this yard so we did of course in the last episode get to the interior detailing for the actual workshop area and also of course doing that arc welders effect as well which I think came out pretty well right so as you can see I've gone ahead and of course done all the weathering and I just sort of felt that it was easier to do this off camera because it's pretty messy and there's plenty of videos that I've previously done where I show weathering methods and of course this is just using the ground up chalk pastels as a weathering powder and then of course going over this with a clear matte spray to fix it all into place so it's certainly changed a bit and it's certainly looking more the part it is very grimy as you would expect for a coal yard so there's a number of things now that we need to add into here for some detail now one of the things that I've also made up is this wooden platform which is all laser cut and custom made to fit into this particular area here so it was on the cards to have some kind of platform where sacks of coal can be loaded into the back of a vehicle e.g. a lorry or small truck so we have here a Oxford die cast truck and this is one of those scammel mechanical horses from probably the late 40s sorry no would be the late 30s into the early 40s and it's one of those three wheel lorries so perfectly suited for getting around inside this yard and the idea is that that can back up to this platform and this lorry might be maybe for delivering domestic sacks of coal to houses in the neighborhood so we've got that there and then we've got a whole number of other little features in here and we'll probably go through these when I finish actually installing them on into these particular areas there's wooden pallets, there's oil drums, we've got a few coal sacks and, and then of course we've got some other items here this is the capping stones which are actually going on the top of the workshop building so We've also got some workmen shoveling coal or cutting wheelbarrows with some coal in them. So, you know, there's a number of details to add in here. And then, of course, we've got our coal bunkers here, which I haven't actually fixed into place yet. So we'll fix them into place and then I'm going to add more coal spilling out onto the cobblestones. And, of course, I'll use the 50-50 PVA glue water mix much the same as what you would use for ballasting to secure the coal into place that's spilling out onto the cobblestones so once again I'll just speed through the process of adding some of these components to the coal yard
So we've now got all the various details in place and I'll just run through a few of the items so as you know where they came from and maybe sort of what modifications I did to some of the items. So starting over in this corner here we've sort of got a collection of pallets with some various bits of junk and scrap material on them, some leaned up pallets, some a pallet with some oil drums on it. So the pallets I think from memory they are made by Pico, they're the model scene plastic pallets, they're actually quite good. These items here are Woodland Scenics white metal castings which I've then painted up and the oil drums I'm actually not entirely sure I think I've had them floating around in my junk drawer for so long now that I can't remember where they came from but these have all sort of been painted up so the palettes have been given a dry brush effect just to grime them up and make them look quite filthy and then if we sort of head over into the coal stage area and there's a number of various different people I think some could be Barkman branch line figurines there is some knock figurines possibly even some Hornby figurines in there as well and I have had to paint some of them because they were wearing rather hideous brightly colored tops like for example I think this chap was wearing a yellow top so I sort of dulled down the colors to kind of make it look more like there in the industrial setting I think I might have to paint this chap's head a different color because his hair is rather bright yellow possibly could be mistaken for Donald Trump so there are a few other items here now one of the things that you would have noticed that as I was fiddling with the underside of this lorry now what I was actually doing was packing some black tack in around the wheels and axles so as to firm up the axles or make them rigid so that the wheels wouldn't spin and then of course dab glue on the bottom of the tires to glue that in and it just sort of makes it more secure I think because I'm not going to move this lorry I think it's quite nice that this particular vehicle can just stay there permanently so we have over on this platform here some coal sacks now I think these are also possibly from Pico range the model scene items that you can buy there is a sack barrow here and what I've actually done with these sacks is because they're actually when you get them they're really glossy black which is not entirely accurate so I have painted them in the AK matte varnish AK interactive matte varnish which is a brilliant matte varnish it absolutely truly matte finish and just dab that over there to dull down the glossiness of those coal sacks so the actual platform itself this is another one of my laser cut projects and it's using a 1.5 millimeter quite high density brown card now I can't remember the specific name for it but it actually is, is a fantastic material for laser cutting and of course that included the framework underneath this platform as well so that of course has been grimed up I think I went over it initially with a very light black wash and then some black weathering powders and then finally a clear coat of matte varnish over the top of that so I've added in a little bit of growth I didn't want to go overboard with weeds and so forth because I sort of felt that this is such an industrial area I really can't imagine that plant life would really kind of prefer this type of environment to try and grow in so there's some thin strips of grass along the edges furthest away from the coal and it just sort of gives the impression that a little bit sort of unkept in terms of the yard these are just strips I think they're knock you can get knock strips of grass and then of course what I've done is trim them down really f into tiny little thin strips and glued them along the edges so it's not where I've applied static grass they're actually pre-made and ready to go so with the coal itself as you saw in the sped up video footage 
I've added in the additional coal. I then lightly misted that with some IPA and then of course drizzle the 50-50 mix of PVA glue. So I certainly think the yard is looking a lot more attractive in the sense of being a coal yard I guess and I think it definitely looks the part. So if we take a look at our main building and of course in the video footage you saw the application of these capping stones across the top of the walls now once again this is just laser cut card and of course with the lighter cutting for the engraved stone slab pieces and then once these were in place it was a case of going over the capping stones with some super glue so this is a liquid super glue that's drizzled over the top and this is a wee trick that I learnt from Tony at Tony Northeastern and the glue soaks into the card and pretty much goes off and it makes this card really solid so you don't end up with frazzled edges or any kind of delaminating of the card so it's actually a really great method for getting a nice solid finish for that so I've also added a little bit of weathering of course around the base of the building and around the pavement so it all matches up and then just a little bit of weathering around the back of the building as well to level that up. So now that we've got the coal yard all dressed up and with a bit of detail and also sort of finished off obviously the capping stones on the workshop building we'll head over to the layout and position these in place and see how it all looks. Right so we're now over at the layout and we can go ahead and position the coal yard and the workshop in place. Now as you can see here there is a rectangular hole that's been cut out of the baseboard and of course as I mentioned in the previous video this is to accommodate the circuit board which is underneath the workshop. Now this of course controls the arc welding but I've also used the circuit board also to share some of the circuitry for the lighting as well so there's an interior light in here and then of course we've got two exterior lights as well so we'll start by positioning the coal yard and what I've actually done over in this area here is anchored down this section of pavement so this is now permanently fixed to this baseboard now We've got to remember that this whole section of baseboard is actually a lift out section so there's a number of items here that I think I can permanently fix into place because I can literally take this whole area off if I need to. So with the bit of pavement that's now anchored in I can then slot that in and that lines up with the pavement here so what I'm going to do is permanently anchor this coal yard down so it will be fixed to the baseboard. Now one of the things that of course I had to consider in here is the accessibility of locomotives and rolling stock. Now one of the locomotives I have that is a great testing bed for clearances is of course the class 08 or is also affectionately known as Gronk because it has the coupling rods on the external chassis and so they do protrude out beyond the locomotive so this really gives a good test to make sure that we've got the clearance that we need for a 08 to get in here so you'll probably notice too that over here there is a goods platform now being added to here so I'll come back to that in a minute but first of all we'll get these items in position and this simply slots into the hole in here so the workshop building itself I won't permanently anchor down I will actually make that a lift out section just if I need to get into it to do any work on it so it almost acts really like a jigsaw puzzle where these items begin 
to fall into place so of course next to that is our access road to the goods yard and we've got a bit of a cobblestone section to go in there and then of course next to that we have a continuation of course of our street front and further shops so of course moving ahead in the next series of episodes when that'll be this whole goods yard area through here will be raised up so the actual siding in here will be embedded into some form of hard standing cobblestone area so with the goods depot platform i thought it might be quite interesting to shape that in with this siding that comes in here so it can actually double up as a way of transferring goods or possibly even this crane actually assists in leveraging maybe sacks of coal as well on pallets but that is a possibility because it can actually sort of reach across a little bit but it just creates a little bit of an interesting area so when I came to plan out this platform of course I did actually make up a initial card template so that I could actually get the curvature correct and also make sure that we had some clearance here for an 08 to get in here so this will come up in a future video and with the goods depot area and finishing off this good shed and so forth so there we have it for the detailing in the coal yard and sort of finishing off that workshop a little bit further and I certainly think it's taking shape quite nicely I think there's more detail I would like to add in there I definitely want to actually add more coal sacks but I ran out so I will have to go and get some more of those and there's probably other items that I'd like to add in I was wondering about empty coal sacks so there is the impression obviously that coal sacks have yet to be filled with coal as well so there might be some other bits and bobs as well possible general litter lurking about in the yard and of course some further weathering to the workshop building I do sort of want to add some form of weathering to the top of the walls as well that sort of create maybe rain streaks and things like that that are weathered down the wall and of course now we've also got the lighting all hooked up now I've just got this temporarily hooked up to a 9 volt battery that's essentially really what I use when it comes to testing all the lighting beforehand and just making sure that all the LEDs are all working correctly because as you know these have to be polarity correct and of course they do tend to pop a little bit if you wire them up incorrectly so just with the 9 volt battery you can see it's all clearly working really well and then of course it will be wired up permanently to a 9 volt adapter that will carry the electricity through for all the lighting so I think the next stage as I mentioned is working further into the goods yard area and of course embedding that siding into some hard standing which will probably be more of the cobblestone texture and of course carrying through into the good shed as well I think that just needs a little bit more weathering and of course particularly around the new platform that I've built there that's going to need more weathering that sort of reflects maybe coal dust and so forth that's spread over from the coal merchant's yard so before I go there's probably a few of you who with a very keen eye may have spotted a subtle difference with this current video and that would be myself sporting a wedding ring now Sarah and I my partner we've been together for 12 years now but just the other day or actually just a few weeks ago we decided it was time to tie the knot so I can clearly say I'm officially married now and my wife rules the house but I rule the garage so I'll leave it there for this episode I certainly hope you've all gained some inspiration and ideas for your own layouts please don't forget to like and subscribe do take care everyone look after yourselves and I will catch you next time bye for now